The main principle of Jadam is to do as nature does, which is great. Practically speaking, Cho says that this means that he doesn't recommend crop rotation, removal of crop residue, and conventional fertilizer application schedules. He also avoids discriminating against anaerobic bacteria in favor of only aerobic bacteria. Now these are some bold claims, and I'm sure that some of you watching are going to struggle to get on board with this. That's okay. Just hang on, and I will do my best to explain the rationale. Starting with the first set of values, so, so no crop rotation. Cho suggests that if you look at nature, you will never see plants rotating themselves season over season. The fear and legitimate concern regarding monocrop agriculture is that, number one, you will steadily deplete the nutrients that that plant requires in order to grow and thereby create nutrient imbalance in the soil, and two, plants in a monoculture will become more susceptible to, to disease as a strand of fungi or bacteria can wipe out an entire crop given it's the variety that is susceptible. Joe's response to this is that the reason soil nutrients are depleted in farming operations is because crop residues are removed and discarded, sometimes even burned as waste material. In nature, plants are constantly self-mulching, re-imparting nutrients back to the soil that they will then be able to utilize later on for sustenance. Cho's response to the fear of disease is that our fears are overblown. All sorts of diseases and pathogenic fungi live in the soil at all times. The key is not to try to remove them, but in crowding them out with beneficial biology. The same applies to human cleanliness, by the way. The example that I often give people is if your kids were growing up and started hanging out with friends that were a bad influence on them, the solution would not be to remove them from all social interactions with everyone. A better approach might be to encourage them to hang out with the right crowd, adopt a more supportive friend group so that the poor friend group loses influence. If you sanitize your hands constantly and take antibiotics for every single illness or infection, you're kind of wiping the slate clean, which leaves the door open for pathogens to thrive. A better approach might be to incorporate beneficial probiotics into your diet and skincare. Obviously, do not take this as medical advice, I'm not a doctor, but I use this example as how we can view plant cultivation and soil health from the Jadam framework. Again, I'll mention that Cho is speaking largely to farmers who are already growing single crops as their produce. For those growers, he says it's a bit unrealistic to suggest that they should just diversify their crops. Instead, what they can do is utilize the crop residue as a way to rebalance soil nutrients and feed biology. And we'll get into this a little bit more later. The second main principle in Jadam is to not value aerobic microbes over anaerobic microbes. And this one flies in the face of nearly all modern organic gardening wisdom, but it was a pretty significant unlock for me once I learned about Cho's perspective. His response to the fear of foul-smelling putrefied anaerobic soils is that in nature, putrefaction plays a critical role in initiating and maintaining balance in the ecosystem. For this, he goes through a lengthy history lesson spanning back thousands of years ago to records of Chinese farmers and ancient books written about agricultural practices all the way to the present day. And essentially he calls out the so-called organic farming founders, Albert Howard, Rudolf Steiner, and J.I. Rodale, by saying so many generations of farmers before them farmed organically, and now we're just going to pretend that they don't exist. Cho's suggestion for why agricultural history has been erased and ignored is because for millennia farmers weren't sold products, they made their own. And these were not only the photosynthetic microbes that convert sunlight into carbon that produces independent nutrients, it was the anaerobic decomposers as well. If you dig down into the soil, you'll find both aerobic and anaerobic microbes, and each have a unique role and function in crop cultivation. Again, this is a simplified explanation. Check out the book to learn more about why Cho thinks this to be the case, and the capitalist powers that be that don't want you to know that you don't need their products. 